Hello, my name is Tim Allsop from CyberSafe. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration showing how the CyberSafe Trust Broker products are, can, can be used for uh, single sign-on and multi-factor authentication using the Microsoft Azure MFA product. So first of all, let's use a simple example of single sign-on for SAP GUI. I double click on my SAP system and I'm logged in, very simple. No MFA in this particular case. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to configure the policy on the server so that it checks a role to see whether MFA is going to be required or not. And if I look at this rule further down in the policy, down here, you'll see that in this case, I'm checking to see if the user has this role. You can obviously change that role and put multiple roles if you want to, um, to determine whether the user gets MFA. There are also other conditions that you can put in the policy, like checking the time. So you can make it so that MFA is only required once per day or once per week or once per three hours, whatever you prefer. So now that I've changed the policy, what's going to happen is when I log into the system, it's going to require me to use MFA. And in this particular case, it's asking me for a verification code. So on my mobile phone, which you can see on the right, I'm going to launch the Microsoft Authenticator app and it's now requiring my fingerprint. I've pressed my finger on the fingerprint reader and now the one-time password is shown. So this one-time password is only valid once. If I type in 353559, then it should work and I'm now logged in and I've got MFA. One thing to point out is that it is possible to, um, through the policy, configure Trust Broker so that MFA is only happening when it's required. Um, some users might be required to use MFA when they log in. Some users might not be required to use MFA when they log in. What I'm going to do also is demonstrate that you can run um, a transaction and this can configure, this, this can require MFA for the user. So in this case, I run a transaction. It doesn't matter what the transaction is. You can configure whatever transactions you consider to be important. And um, typically those are transactions that require elevated access or require um, access to sensitive data. So again, it's asking me for my one-time password. So I'm gonna type in 17466. I'm gonna make a mistake and type in the wrong passcode. I've put a four instead of a three. And you'll see that it's failed the authentication, so it requires me to do it again. 174663, press enter. This time it worked. So the transaction is only run when the MFA succeeds. Again, you can configure how often the MFA is required when transactions are executed, it's up to you. Uh, so the, 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 the frequency of the MFA authentication requests for a particular user are configurable. So that is um, a quick demo of the Trust Broker Secure Client product, which is used for, uh, typically used for thick client applications like SAP GUI, but it could also be used for other thick client applications like Analysis for Office, anything that's connecting to an SAP um, application running on NetWeaver ABAP. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to use a web browser. So this is actually using a different Trust Broker product called Trust Broker One Credential. And first of all, I will just go to the same SAP system, the N1A system, and put slash NWBC. NWBC is configured on this system so that it doesn't require MFA for anybody. Just as an example, you may not think that's sensible, but it's just a demonstration. So the point that I'm making is that you can configure ICF services to behave differently. Um, for example, in this case, NWBC is not going to do any MFA checking, whereas other ICF services on the same system might be required to check a policy and determine if MFA is used. A typical um, application that people are using uh, this product with is Fiori. So I'm going to launch uh, Fiori using fiori.cybersafe.com. This is, again, it's requiring me to enter my one-time password. So I enter 273 five, two, three. Press the log on button and I'm in. Very simple. So rather than logging off, I'll just close my browser because it's quicker. Um, I'm going to open my browser again and this time I'm going to, what am I going to do? Oh yes. Um, we have a product that is 
um, a relatively new product. We are launching it next month, uh, March 2023. Um, and this product is um, used for the business objects platform. Um, so I'm going to go into the BI Launchpad and you will see that it's going to require me to use MFA. So 072155, press login and we're in. So customers who have business objects and are using it for BI Launchpad or CMC or open document links, um, these are a good examples of when MFA can be enforced um, for users when they log in. I think that probably is enough. Um, hopefully you've got a good feel for the products and uh, thank you very much for listening.